Arnie Jensen, great to see you. Thanks for joining me on SACTV.com. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. And basically what we're doing is um, we're giving information about anything that's going to help society in any way. That's what SAC TV is about. Um, you work on cars. You have your own shop that you co-owned. It, it's called uh, El Camino Smog and Repair. So we're in Carmichael, California, and yeah. uh, right on the corner of uh, El Camino and Walnut. And it's next to that Merlino's, or now it's called it Hagen's. It used, used to be Merlino's, now it's called Hagen's, uh, yeah. Um, Orange Freeze. The Orange Freeze, the original Orange Freeze. Yeah. That's where I go usually. I think they make a pretty good Orange Freeze, and here's a pretty cool orange cat. <laughs> Anyway, um, so you, you've had that shop since what? Uh, actually, uh, this, we opened in uh, on December 1st of 2004. Oh, wow. I so thought you had it since the 80s. We're about seven and a half years old, but I have mm -hmm. been licensed to uh, smog, check, inspect, and repair vehicles under the California Emissions Reduction Program since 85. I see. Okay, so uh, basically, is... is Smogging cars, your specialty then at the shop? Um, well, you know, the smog inspection itself is not very difficult. It's when the car fails its smog test that the diagnostic comes aspect of it comes in and is very vital to uh, that the technician knows what he's doing to re keep the cost at a minimum for the repairs that the car needs. I think since the 70s, uh, the air quality in Sacramento Valley has in, has increased dramatically. The key to uh, avoiding expense, expensive repairs besides scheduled maintenance, which is very important, um, is also if that warning light comes on and your car's, you seem to think your car is just running fine, uh, you know, that light is on there to tell you that you need to address the problem before it gets really expensive. Other times it can be something as simple as a loose gas cap. You know, uh, they have systems on the car that monitor the fuel evaporative uh, uh, controls so that you're not venting raw gas vapors into the atmosphere because fuel nowadays is so much more volatile than it was uh, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. Uh, right now you can pour a little thimble of gasoline onto the ground and watch, stand there and watch it disappear in seconds, whereas you know, 20 to 30 years ago, uh, you could pour the same amount of fuel onto the ground and it would be there 10 minutes later. Mm -hmm. So it's very important to contain those, those vapors and, and uh, run them back through the engine instead of venting them to the atmosphere and, and, uh, and harming our ozone layer. Are you saying the, uh, all the uh, computer elements that have been added to cars has helped reduce pollution? Oh, yeah, exponentially, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and now they've gotten... Simply by monitoring how much emissions there are. And the technology that goes behind uh, the way the engine is managed, its air-fuel ratio, its timing advance curve, uh, mm -hmm. um, on deceleration, why do we need our fuel injectors to be pumping fuel through the car when we're just decelerating and braking, the computer shuts the injectors off for, de for deceleration. And within a nanosecond, when you want to put your foot on the gas pedal again, the injectors kick back in again and you don't even feel that your car was, you were just driving a big air pump because no fuel is being ran through it. Um, so little things like that. I could go on and on about what sort of systems are on these vehicles nowadays that, uh, that reduce emissions. Um, There's still a certain amount of uh, um, issue, health risk involved with um, coming near uh, vapors, uh, uh, like petroleum vapors, right? I mean, it, hydrocarbons, carbon monoxide, oxides of nitrogen. Um, yeah, there's uh, we, several several cases of emphysema, um, uh, respiratory disease um, in certain uh, areas that don't haven't incorporated the uh, smog program as intensely as the Sacramento Valley has. What can people do to uh, limit the amount of maintenance repairs? Are you talking uh, breakdowns or, or uh, 
let's just say repairs uh, or maintaining their car so that maintain, it doesn't break down. Maintaining the car so mm -hmm. it doesn't break down. Well, I think I'm a firm. I am a firm believer in scheduled maintenance because, um, uh, as a business owner, obviously it gener generates revenue for me, um, but it does the customer a favor because if you maintain your vehicle, it's less likely to break. A broken vehicle is much more expensive to uh, have serviced than a vehicle that you've just you're just in for your thirty, sixty, or ninety thousand miles service. If you do these services and keep on top of it. Um, you're less likely to have unexpected bills pop up down the road. Um, so it's definitely worth maintaining your vehicle um, as sort of an insurance against breakdown and coming in on a tow truck. And then at the, the very worst, uh, there's cars out there that have the factory engine oil in the crankcase mm -hmm. with, you know, 50, 60,000 miles on them. And that, <laughs> Do you think that engine is going to last very long? It's going to start to pollute and it's going to go bad and this customer is going to now have a car that's worth almost nothing because it needs an entire engine. Mm -hmm. you know, so maintenance, maintenance, maintenance. I cannot stress that enough. Um, and in a so nutshell, care. maintenance is what? Just oil changes and... Um, and well, there's several different maintenances and the manufacturers, different manufacturers have different uh, criteria. So I've got all of that on disc. At, at my business and so let's say you're in for your 60,000 mile service what I'll do is I'll take your your, your making model and enter it in and pull up what the manufacturer spe uh, uh, specifications are and what the what the manufacturer is suggesting you have done at that mileage increment now let's say you just put an air filter in it the other day I take a separate sheet of paper and I work off of the manufacturers printout and I write down the things that the car does need, and that air filter is not going on that separate sheet of paper that I'm going to make an estimate for you on the, on the maintenances that you do need. And I'm going to go out there, obviously, and I'm going to pull your dipstick and smell your oil. I'm going to check your transmission fluid. I'm going to check your brake fluid um, and a host of other things that, you know, I, I will also transfer onto that list. So you are given an opportunity to do these maintenances or even repairs, if I find something that's broken, it's gonna go on the list even though it's not necessarily part of the manufacturer's mileage increment because it's a repair, not a maintenance. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I will make you aware of what your car needs to take, so it can take care of you. Well, Arnie, thanks for joining me. Let's talk more about the future of automobiles uh, okay. in another video. All right, it's been fun, thank you.